can we hold our government accountable through something that's written in our Constitution? The grand juries have the ability to hold our elected officials accountable. But uh, a lot of shenanigans has been played with the grand juries over the last few, now, 20 some years. To introduce my co host, the author, Jonathan Burgess. Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. What got you interested in uh, learning about the grand jury in the first place? A number of years ago, I was interested because of the Oklahoma City bombing and in a news report there was a gentleman named Hoppy Heidelberg who was on the grand jury and he complained that he was trying to get additional information he wanted to ask for a set of the second bomber I don't know if you remember all that it was a long time ago the government was very very serious about trying to control the the dialogue the story mm -hmm. It's the most amazing story if you dig into it at all about what actually happened at Oklahoma City. But Hoppy Heidelberg was on the grand jury and he was chased off the grand jury and he was complaining in a news conference later that he didn't have to leave the grand jury because the judge tricked him. And I thought, well, that's curious. And he made, made something of a mention of the grand jury handbook. I thought, well, I like to see the grand jury handbook. I've always been a studious person, I have a number of degrees in different fields. I went to the library at the time. We didn't have the internet. So I thought, why don't, why can't I get this handbook? Uh -huh. There was one, at the time, it's the 1990s, there was one grand jury handbook in the entire United States and it was unavailable. Uh huh. It was checked out. In the entire United States, there was only one grand jury handbook and this was when, what year again? This was in the 1990s. I mean, I, when I looked at that, I thought, this is the most amazing thing. So then I got- Out of the whole country or just like in, in the, the Portland entire library? Country. No, I, if, if you, and you can still do it. If you want a book, you go to the library and they have interlibrary loans. When you look at the interlibrary loan system, you just request a book. They uh -huh. check, so I went to the library and they checked the entire country. There was one grand jury handbook in the United States, but it was checked out. I thought, well, that's just crazy. So I called up the uh, downtown Portland here. I, I called up the federal courthouse. I said, I'd like to see a grand jury handbook. Uh huh. And they said, well, you have to get permission from a federal judge to see the grand jury handbook. I thought, this has got to be good. If it's that <laughs> hard. <laughs> if it's that he hard. He thinks doth protest too much. <laughs> <laughs> you know you've uh, got some smoke there, so go on. It's something, they're trying to hide something. Uh -huh. And what I found after pursuing this is that under the Clinton administration, they actually changed the grand jury handbook. And that's what I did in a little book. It's an e-book. It'll be available in a few days through Amazon, the okay. her, her Kindle version, a electronic download. And it'll be called? It's called Take the Law in Your Own Hands, The Grand Jury in America. Okay. By Jonathan Burgess. It's just an astonishing and shocking revelation that Bill Clinton and Janet Reno uh -huh. actually worked to rewrite the grand jury handbook. Uh -huh. So the you know it was good enough for the United States from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and even into the 1990s. The same grand jury handbook was used, and then they thought, oh, let's change the grand jury handbook, and they changed it for the worse. They basically put a bunch of lies in it. So what I did was I reprinted the original grand jury handbook when I found one. I have reprinted the current grand jury handbook so you don't have to get a federal judge's permission. Uh huh. And I wrote a compare and contrast. I also uh -huh. have a county grand jury handbook. I included a section on some amazing information about the original 13th Amendment and also how to access grand juries that this has been a, a campaign for 100 years, that, that the progressives invaded have both the Democrat and Republican parties, and that they're, they're playing both sides against the middle in order to advance their progressive agenda. Aha, uh -huh. and what is, why is the get grand jury dangerous to the progressives? The purpose of the uh, of progressives is to have a all-powerful state to keep the public ignorant 
the media is there to control and lie to and manipulate the public and to convert the government into an administrative state that's not even subject to laws of any kind, to legislation, to judges or governors or the people. They want to create an administrative state where the smart people, the oh, progressives, yeah. okay, because they're the smartest, aren't are they? in absolute control. Mm -hmm. uh, we are under their control. And it, the problem with that is the grand jury ha is, by the original book, <clears throat> it's described as an independent body with almost limitless power. Doesn't that, found, doesn't that sound mind-boggling? That's described where? That's the way the original grand jury handbook, the pre-1992 grand jury independent handbook. Independent body uh -huh. with almost limitless power. That is the grand jury. And that's why the lawyers and the progressives and the politicians, they don't want, to, they don't want the public to know about the power of the grand jury. Because a grand jury, well, the, and especially the most important thing is the presentment power of the grand jury, which is an action by the grand jury itself. Potentially some of the most powerful people in the entire region are the members of the grand jury. Because if the grand jury makes a vote to have a summons or a subpoena, they can take anyone grab any citizen, any government official, from the governor on up to the president, and make him personally show up to the grand jury and answer questions. And they cannot refuse. They can't send a lawyer. They can't dodge it. They, they have to come marching in and answer questions. Wouldn't you love to have a grand jury take Hillary Clinton and make her sit down and answer questions? Yeah, that would be fabulous. Charges of, cr of crime may be brought to your attention in several ways. This is to the grand jury's attention. Right. By the court, mm -hmm. which of course means the judge. Mm -hmm. um, number two, by the United States attorney. And number three, by your own personal knowledge or from matters properly brought to your personal attention. That's the presentment power. That is the presentment. In mm -hmm. all these cases, the grand jury should have testimony or other evidence presented regarding a charge before taking action. And as matters brought to your attention otherwise, probably no form of indictment will have, have drawn in advance by the United States Attorney. Under such, thus you may investigate any situation mm -hmm. to see if a federal crime has been committed, whether the situation is brought to your attention officially or unofficially, but your investigation must be devoted to ascertaining if there is probable cause to believe that a federal crime has been committed and to reporting accordingly either by indictment or by formal pres presentment to be followed by indictment. If you're on a grand jury, if you see something on my show or something that's going on in the government that you think is, is wrong, is a crime, federal crime, then you can um, ask, and, and, and what could I do? If I was on a federal grand jury and I wanted to investigate, let's just say election fraud, what, what would my powers be as a member of a grand jury, federal grand jury? Any grand jury member, and there are impaneled federal grand juries that cover every square inch of the United States. So there is a grand jury somewhere, and there are many grand jurors. Any member of the grand jury, upon their own initiative, can bring information to their other grand jurors. They sit around a room together, there's 20-something, depending on how many show up that day. They have to have a quorum to actually take action, but they can discuss it. They bring up a subject and they say, you know what, I heard, I heard about this crime, and geez, I've got this document I looked up when I was home, and I think we all should look at it. And then there's a discussion among the fellow grand jury members. No one can stop that. The federal court, no one. That group of grand jurors potentially, this is hard to imagine, are potentially the most powerful people in the entire region. But they're treated with the mushroom treatment. I, I described that to you before, but kept in the dark. Well, tell and, everybody. If you are on a federal grand jury, it's a secret. So well, we can't tell, we can't um, contact you, or you can't tell us that you're on a federal grand jury. If you get jury duty, you just have to tell everybody you're on jury duty. You can't say that, oh, I'm on a federal grand jury, because it's like, they, they want to keep it secret because they do not want to have you be threatened mm -hmm. um, for, you know, by the people that, that you're prosecuting or you're indicting. So, uh, but I believe, Ken, if I wanted to say, uh, 
submit something to the grand jury about election fraud to, to investigate it. Could I send a letter to the foreman or, or just to the grand jury? The progressive conspiracy, what they've done is that they have not just hidden the grand jury, but they've, gra they've hidden the grand jury uh, associations. It used to be very common. It was everywhere, in every county, all over the United States. There were grand jury associations. Okay. And if, if you were familiar with the Constitution enough to say, well, I have freedom of association. Mm -hmm. So anyone, anywhere can associate with other people and you can choose not to. So the, what we need to form, and we have all these patriot groups, very good, excellent patriot groups, enthusiastic, but to convert that to something where you can gain some real power to get your, uh, the attention of an independent body with almost limitless power, and how do you talk to them? Form a grand jury association uh -huh. and start the political advocacy for a dramatic increase in the pay of grand jury members. And that will get the attention of grand jury members who can then contact you anonymously through the internet and you can then feed them information. I believe we could gain direct access to every federal grand jury around the United States through various members of the grand jury. Well, can we just send, can the grand jury association just send uh, a email or a right. notification or letter to it's the bias. foreman of the grand jury? Because right. the foreman's changed, because the foreman's just elected among the, 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 yeah. the population of grand jury members, correct? They seat for a year. We could have our meetings. We have our monthly meetings with the Conservative Party Oregon, and we could establish a grand jury association amongst our membership. And we want them to look into something, say voter fraud or election fraud. Uh, then we could submit a letter. The Postal <laughs> Service will take your envelope and hand it to the grand jury. So it will go directly to the grand jury through the post office. The federal courthouses. Yeah, okay. it's easy to so, track so it down. federal courthouse and then they would send it to them, and grand jury members, and they felt that it was something that they wanted to investigate, then they would go and investigate and, ha and, and subpoena people to come in and testify to see if there was a reason to indict uh, these government officials uh, with regards to, say, election fraud like the Secretary of State, for instance, if we wanted to have him do that. And then the Secretary of State would have to come and testify in front of the grand jury. Of course, yep. this would all be secret. We wouldn't know unless, of course, um, they were wise enough to die. <laughs>